Welcome to St. Paul United Methodist Church Music and Message Segment. We are glad you joined us. Let's just praise the Lord. We worship you. When out to see and hear John, 
And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. His clothes were woven from coarse camel hair, and he wore a leather belt around his waist. For food, he ate locusts and wild honey. John announced, Someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater that I'm not even worthy to stoop down like a slave and untie the straps of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of God. Now we will be favored with a special music selection from Ms. Lynette Scantling, followed by the sermon from our pastor, Reverend Richard Lane Stryker, The Voice of John.
Holy Spirit, Lord, bless us in proclaiming your word. Bless us in hearing your word. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Welcome to the second Sunday of Advent. Our passage comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. But as I began to read Mark 1, it occurred to me that the other Gospels had slightly different openings compared to Mark 1. For example, Matthew begins with the genealogy of the stepfather of Jesus, the genealogy of Joseph, verses 1 through 17. And then in verse 18, he pivots to the story of Jesus' birth. When he says, this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. That's how Matthew begins his gospel. Luke, on the other hand, begins with a reason for which he is writing. And he addresses a manuscript to one who is called an excellent Theophilus. Verse 5 it says, in verse 5 and following, he details the birth of John the Baptist followed by the birth of Jesus. The Gospel of John, though, begins with that so often put as scripture. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has not, that hath not been made. And then John starts telling about John the Baptist, but he doesn't begin with John the Baptist's birth like Matthew and Luke. He begins with John the Baptist as an adult already in ministry. And he tells about Jesus after. So Matthew and Luke begin with Jesus as a baby, John does not. And like John, Mark, that we're studying today, skips the birth and childhood of Jesus and goes straight to the point, saying the beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah. The very first verse, the very first line says the beginning of the good news. He wants us to know that it is all about good news. The Son of God. Now, which we knew Mark 1 1, like we know Mark, like we know that John 1 1 in the beginning was the Word. Because even though John gives us all this long explanation of the pre existence of Jesus, in reality, when Mark says the Son of God, he's talking about the pre existing Jesus. I'm about to tell you, he says, the good news about the Messiah. The good news about an expected one who is the Son of God. And the good news begins with John the Baptist, again like John, or like the Gospel of John. He comes straight to John the Baptist as an adult. As foretold by Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. That messenger is John the Baptist. The way of the Messiah. And the messenger will be a voice. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. John is like a town crier calling out for the people to listen for the Messiah, Jesus. Therefore, so, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. That has not changed us. The need to repent and the need to receive forgiveness from God and others have not changed. It also said that John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. Is God calling each of us 
to walk around with that well, I think I got a letter, but I'm gonna try it. I have a letter. But it's not only us to walk around with leather belt around our waist, eating locusts and wild honey. Not necessary. No. God is calling each of us to walk around just as we are. God wants you to be who you are, but still tell the good news. Mark began with the words good news, and that is who we are. We are good news bearers, bearers of good news. The people responded to the message of John. They were baptized in the Jordan. Some responded by suggesting that in fact John the Baptist was the Messiah, the one that was expected to come. But John, he said, remained a voice pointing to the younger cousin of his, Jesus. He remained a voice telling of one who said us he was not even worthy to untie. You know, sometimes when I go through the airport, one of the things I try to do whenever I'm traveling, I always wear a pair of shoes without any kind of lace. You know, you want to be able to take it off. You're getting that, you like to check out your shoes these days. And walk through. And then when you get through, you don't have to get there and tie that thing up. Just slip it right back on and go to where you go. It's a whole lot more convenient. But what John is saying is, look, even when Jesus is walking through the airport, I am not worthy enough to stoop on my knees and to unblaze his shoes and to put it back on his feet. I'm not even good enough to do that. I'm not good enough to be one of the servants in the household, taking all Jesus' sandals in and lacing it back up. I am not good enough to be any of that because John is saying that because John is humble. A humble prophet. Yet John is firm. He turns around after all of that humility. He turns around and says to the Pharisees that one of the Matthew 27, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? You know, John was that type of voice. Today we are surrounded by many voices, audible voices, and voices through sign language. Voices in books, just kind of the words jumping off of the page. Digital voices, Facebook, Twitter, now the X, Pinterest, all of these things are voices that come to us. You cannot travel from one place to another, especially when you travel from one state to another. You will see all of the big billboards say, buy me and take me home with you. Voices, voices that are new sprint. And television, even if you are going through an aisle at the supermarket, you will look and you will see magazines. All the time they put it right there. They're trying to catch our attention in order for us to purchase those things. But even when you don't purchase them, you have also experienced the cover. So those are voices coming out at us. So through these mediums, we are surrounded by voices of peace and voices of war, voices of despair and voices of hope, voices of hate, and voices of love. There is great need for voices of peace in the very Middle East where John and Jesus found themselves. There is a lot of bloodletting going on right now in Gaza, and the killing must stop. There comes a time when voices have to speak. They have to speak up and say, let there be let there be ceasefire. Let there be hope for innocent people of Gaza. Hope for Israel. An opportunity to live in peace with their neighbors. The militant group we all know, Hamas, killed 1,200 people in their attack on Israel. And we condemn that. Now the retaliation has killed us on yes, December 9th and something like that. 17,500 Palestinians in Gaza. Compare 1,200 to 17,700 people, Palestinians in Gaza. 48,800 wounded. There has to be a voice for peace, a voice against collective punishment, a voice calling for ceasefire to rescue the millions that are still at risk 
of being firm. May God help me to be such a voice. May God help you to be such a voice. A voice for peace in time of the rugby of war. John is clear. The path to God the Father is through God the Son. He is also clear that he, John, is not a Messiah. He's just an instrument telling people how to find Jesus. You can be an instrument, brothers and sisters. You can be an instrument who can tell people the good news. Tell people how to find Jesus. Tell people about the author and finisher of our faith, our Savior, and our Redeemer. We have to be good news bearers, but we also have to be people of peace, calling for peace, where nations can live together in peace, and where the Middle East, where the very John and Jesus live, where we study the Bible every day, and they can have two nations, Israel and Palestine living side by side. May it happen in our lifetime. Praise be to God. Amen. service and would like to sow a seed into this ministry, please visit our giving page. The information is provided on the slide coming across your screen. We hope you were blessed by today's worship service. We encourage our St. Paul family, friends, and those looking for a church home to join us each week for our virtual church experience. Please like, share, and subscribe to our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. If you would like to visit us in person, we are located on 1500 6th Avenue North, Birmingham, Alabama, 35203. Our phone number is 205-252-3236. Thank you and have a blessed week.